Hey guys, what's going on? It's Data Strain, and I'm here with a new video to tell you about my new favorite toy, the Launchpad Pro. Um, my Push 2 got buggy, and I had to return it, and I was going to replace it with another one, but that was the second time of me having a Push 2 in my possession and something going wrong that made me feel like I it just wasn't supposed to be. Um, so yeah, so now I have a fancy schmancy Launchpad Pro, um, and... I'm going to talk about some things I really love about this and some things that I actually really like with it compared to the push and the push too. Um, so first things first that I really love about this is that it has a standalone mode. So I can use it by itself with the, um, with the dig attack, which is super nifty, super, super nifty. Um, and I can also have these scale modes as well. So we're going to go to note mode here. And then right there, I have a scale. Oh, I'm on the wrong MIDI channel, I think. Yeah, there we go. My bad, sorry. But yeah, so one thing I really liked about this is that it has a standalone mode, and not only that, it has the scale function even without the computer. That's something that the Push 2 and the Push will not do. Um, I even tried using the Push in um, machine and it was basically just a blank MIDI controller no set scales um, you know no real functionality not even any lights you know this thing at least lights up and nice and pretty um, with whatever you're using it for like right now I have it hooked in and it's triggering um, single cycle waveforms in the dig attack to a, uh, to a specific scale um, here's actually a beat that I use or that I made using those techniques um I mean, it's a major plus having the scales on here because with the dig attack, you can you can have a chromatic layout. But I only know so many scales personally. You know, that's something that um, I'm not 100% you know musically trained. Whenever I'm using the key step, honestly, half the time I'm just improvising. Just you know, I know about intervals and like that's about it. I don't know anything else, and I don't know how to get specific sounds. So having like scale layouts uh, is super convenient. So you, to get to those, you just hit shift note. Um, these are the different patterns of scales that you can have. Some of them are close to what the push has, but it's not going to be like the push. Um, and then you set your root note with the dark blue here. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. It's very bright and I apologize. But um, yeah, whatever root note you're going to pick is going to be dark blue. And then these are all the different types of scales that you can pick from. And most of them are scales that you can find in Ableton itself. So having them handy standalone is pretty neat -o if I do say so myself. Um, and you can turn off the scale mode on and off with um, this green button right here in the top corner. Uh, so if I turn that off, it just goes back to its normal uh, chromatic mode, um, which is very similar to how a um, guitar is laid out. And you can also um, switch, if you want to stay in the chromatic mode, you can actually switch your root note by using the right and left buttons. And this is a little confusing because all it does is really change the color. But what whatever is in purple is the actual um, <laughs> is the actual root. Um, so you know this is no longer uh, this is no longer. I mean this this is no longer D. This is D now. This is just showing you where it is. So I mean it's a little it's a little confusing, which is why I like the other scale mode. But it's there. It's available for whoever might want to use it. Um, now the next thing I can use this to control my interaction between machine and Ableton Live. I've been waiting for a machine um, MK3 Ableton template for months now, um, and I got sick and tired of waiting. Um, I love native instruments, I really do, um, but 
you know, I just kind of assumed that with uh, Machine being out so long that they're being able to template by now. And that was my bad for the assumption. I shouldn't have expected that. But uh, it's still a pretty big bummer, you know. But and I and I've heard in the past that they're just like glitchy. That every time live like updates, it just gets messed up or something like that. And I just didn't even want to wait at this point. So now, whenever I'm using it with Machine, not only I, can I use it like the push as a 64 pad controller for doing all my expressive playing, um, but then I can just have it set up here in um, in live mode, you know. And uh, I can go to like my, my session view. I can arm tracks. I can select tracks, I can mute them, solo them out, uh, control the volume, you know, so I can adjust volume. Like that. <laughs> um, and it's cool because it has like the, the fader glide and stuff like that, so you can turn things up and down like, you know, super faster, super slow. I don't know if it's actually like tempo synced. I don't think it's tempo synced, so it's not as finessed as if you did it with a knob. But for quick creation, getting the idea down, that's a really good, uh, really good step. Um, it also does panning, has sends, um, and you can also stop your clips from right here. Hold down and stop clips, and then also stop scenes altogether. Um, so full and comprehensive control over Ableton. The only thing that I would recommend getting with this is maybe like some kind of launch control, something that just has knobs on it, because then that would give you about 90% of the functionality of a push, you know, and then the rest can just be done from your laptop. Um, but I love using this thing with, I love using this with machine personally. I think it allows for very, very expressive playing. Um, I actually kind of like the velocity sensitivity and the aftertouch more on this than I do the push. Um, the buttons are a little small, but that really doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Um, so it's easy to work with. Um, and I did watch the, uh, a, um, a review by Mad Zach where he talked about, you know, you could accidentally hit buttons here on the bottom, you know, that it was a poor layout design choice, but I don't think so. Cause honestly, like, I feel like if you just, you know, if you're just tapping around like you would, maybe even when, when you're typing, you can always be above that. You don't have to worry about that. Just be a little careful. Um, but I mean, personally, I think this is an amazing between just machine and this together. That is now going to be my live setup if I start playing live, but I'm an, I'm an anxious, anxious guy. So probably not. But if I ever decide to play live, um, this would definitely be a setup for me. If not be this in the dig attack, cause like this, I get tons of control with, and then I can play expressively from here. Um, it's just amazing that I can use it between Ableton machine and any hardware for the most part. The only thing I don't like about it is that the faders in fader mode can't be assigned to different CCs. Um, I don't think, at least not without the computer, um, in standalone mode, but that's okay. You know, dig attacks got, uh, got eight encoders for the most part and then volume and level knobs. I think I'll be fine, but yeah, so if I had to say like, okay, so Launchpad Pro or Push, uh, you know, if, if the Push is your only controller, if you don't use any other controllers or hardware or software, you are just a live Ableton Live based person, um, Push 1 or Push 2, definitely. I mean, I think it's worth the money at that point if you're going to be in there. But for somebody like me who has like, they have a hardware item, they have machine, they use different stuff. Um, and they're, you know, especially if you're like me who is going through a phase where I'm trying to get more away from the computer for the most part. Um, and just have a nice portable fun setup to work with you know something like this is really convenient to have uh, i wish it was battery powered the fact that it has um you know a plug is you know not the best for like ex like accessibility and like portability but still pretty sweet um I genuinely i am 100 percent happy with this and i would recommend the uh the launchpad pro to anybody and everyone unless you've already got a push then you don't necessarily need it um, but yeah, man, controlling hardware from this thing is sweet. It's nice. It's nice. But I'm going to end this now because I've been rambling a little bit and I've got to get going. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really hope you, um, enjoyed hearing the beat that I made. I'm actually going to try to release that later on. Um, and I will catch you guys next time. I don't think I'm going to be doing any more gear reviews, at least not anytime soon. Um, I'm trying to be more fiscally responsible, to be honest. Yeah. You know, something that, I, that I, I really need to do. So, yeah, um, no gear reviews for a while until I find myself some extra money or something like that. Um, so, if you enjoyed the video today, guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please join the community. Uh, you know, have fun. Start conversations. I really want this to be a very fun and energetic place for like-minded individuals to come and, and um, talk about music and music production. 
Um, and if you want to help me keep the channel going and hopefully get more gear in the, in the future to review and use, um, you can um, become a patron today. There's a link to my Patreon down below. Uh, it's only one dollar a month, uh, and at the you know uh, the first twenty people every week to donate will get a shout out on my channel, and I'll leave a link to your channel in the description and in an annotation in the video, um, or something along those lines. Um, and uh, if not, I'm just glad to have you here watching. You know, it's cool. I enjoy doing this a lot. <laughs> so I'll check you guys later. Um, take care and have fun creating.